da 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 um when things get hard and you don't think you can take it anymore i'm emmy uh the birth wizard and she's alex and i'm alex <laughs> sorry You're i cool. was just i was just thinking about how now you have to do that uh theme song music every single time every time yeah yeah <laughs> got it i'm gonna write down the notes now um <laughs> to remind you to breathe we're here to talk about uncomfortable uh topics and to get you through those uh, surges and open up. This week is all about balancing while you're supporting clients. So balancing uh, normal life and being an on-call doula. Dude. Um, yeah. So I, I uh, did not realize how much this topic seeped into last week's topic. Mm -hmm. until we reached about yesterday and I was like oh my god like there's so much seepage however they are different right yeah. there's a difference between bound boundaries and balancing um yeah. because we're talking essentially this week about the logistics of doing it whereas last week was more about like in general how do you make sure to take care of yourself and hold true so yeah. hold space for yourself right and right. others yeah Right. And this was so how do you out actually balance the actual like job? Like, yeah. Um, I think the number one thing people typically ask um, whether they're a potential client or someone who's going to become a doula or a birth worker of any sort is how many clients do you take on a month? Yes. And Big that's, question. A part, that's a part of the balancing questions. Mm -hmm. um, child care, if you're someone who has a child or children. Um, and then, you know, uh, we've kind of touched upon this before. A lot of people identify as uh, mothers and they're probably working other gigs if that's a part of their prerogative or even they have like major stuff going on in their life <laughs> outside of dual work. Yeah. Um, there's very few of us who come into dual work and that's all we're doing. Um, yeah. So let's kick it off really, really simple. Um, how many clients do you take a month or at least what is your ideal to take a month? Yeah, my ideal, probably four, no four. more than that. Yeah. That's three to that's four still, would be my ideal. Yeah. Still and quite a bit. if we're talking about ideal, ideal, it's like two. And then I get to teach lots of childbirth classes in the in, interim. Gotcha. So. See, um, I think that's a, a part of that like talk of balance is is the fact that you're going to be going to be and are teaching childbirth classes so that completely changes your balance yeah how it looks like and even doing like the math of like my ideal amount of money that I want to make is includes for either of those options got it so how often are you hoping to teach classes? Is it like once a month, every six weeks or? I'm hoping to, my series is four weeks. So I'm hoping that I can do like a series every month with a couple of families is like, this is my dream situation. I just no. launched those classes, but yeah, that's where I am. Manifesting. That's my goal. Yeah. <laughs> We're manifesting. <laughs> have a, few, a few families every month in my class. I mean, just to plug you right now, because we, we know that other birth workers are watching you. What do you teach? Yeah. <laughs> I just created a four-week comprehensive childbirth education class with a focus on the third trimester of pregnancy, labor and birth, um, the fourth trimester, and then newborn care. That's pretty so cool. I'm really excited about it. I just finished the training from Birthing Advocacy, which was an awesome training highly recommended i'll plug them for a second right it was a really great and it made it helped me like it made me a better doula as well so i thought it was a really great class to take um and i just launched those they're on my website i'm that's like my next thing i'm trying to focus on <laughs> yeah um that's pretty cool and i i love them as an organization i got the opportunity to take their first run of their queer and trans fertility class blew my mind like every week 
blew my mind. Um, it was major heart work to get through it. And I yeah. know so much more It was now. major heart work to get through this stuff. Yeah. Class. And I'm glad that it was there, but I was kind of surprised. I wasn't like expecting that. I, <laughs> I cried every week, at least yes. once, at yes. least once yeah. during class. And then I would like try and unpack during the night. Cause I, I tried to like journal about what I what I learned about and like try and like digest the information more and I would end up crying again oh, no. uh, <laughs> um yeah so awesome organization and it's so cool that you're going on that venture and what a great way for us to dive into this about talking about balance right like exactly that's yeah. gonna be you balancing education which is schedulable yeah um uh and your other gig is not schedulable yeah. to a point right it's all random um yeah, so let's you, talk about how many clients you take so mine's a little different because I have a partner but mm-hmm. our ideal is no more than six which essentially okay. ends up being three each um however typically we get four a month okay. um and we prefer it that way we would rather more squishy room mm-hmm. than being overloaded for example, this month we, for myself, because also what's going on is my doula partner is also a birth assist mm-hmm. for a couple local midwives. So that's on her schedule. And then mm-hmm. I was doing backup work and then taking on clients of myself because of the situation that these clients were in needing a vaccinated doula. So I, between the two of us, we had eight births. Yeah. Um, and we're almost done with, with it. We've got, we got two Which left is this funny month. because it's literally the 17th like, yeah. <laughs> that you yeah. knocked so many out in the early, you know, oh. the earlier part of the month. Uh, well, yes. and, and, you know, four is my dream. I want to do this like full time. I want this to be right. like an income. Um, but I haven't had a lot of, um, like, ability to even try that and see if that's reasonable because it very well could not be, you know? Yeah, for sure. And the thing that I've figured out over time and why I'm cool with less and less clients and charging more is it's really tough on my body. Um, I have, I have a condition called Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. Essentially the ligaments in my body are extra loosey goosey. So you can imagine during like a hip squeeze, how a shoulder popping out is probably not the yeah. greatest. <laughs> <laughs> so I figured out the busier months, I'm in a lot more pain. Uh, flare ups yeah. happen, which makes me a worse doula. So that's a big part of my balancing is listening to my body and being like, so if you come from a month where you only had one birth, it's okay to take on an extra two, but realize that it's going to take you another month to recover from that. And that's yeah. just talking like, like just on my, my body and what it can do with the balancing. Yeah. Um, the other factor that I keep in mind for my balancing with how many clients I have is that I have a husband who works a full-time gig and it's more than a full-time gig. Typically yeah. he's working 60 to 70 hours a week. Um, he's a software engineer. He, he makes good money, which is part of the reason I have a sugar daddy. Um, and I go to the bank of sugar daddy to help out birth wizard sometimes. <laughs> so it's great. However, it means that there's a, there's, a lot less leeway for my home and the balance that is here because there is even though he works from home there is not that person who can be like no worries i'll cook dinner right yeah Yeah. typically working until eight he takes an hour off to get the kids to bed and then he works until about 1 a.m and then he's up again at nine to Mm. go back to work so he's working all the time yeah 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 yeah. so um that's that's our life. So I really keep in mind that balance and like the people that I take on as clients and what is the workload going to look like and yeah. how much of an impact will I make on them? So if I kind of what we talked about the very, like the second week of like connecting with clients and how do I vet them and all mm-hmm. of those things has to be there. Yeah. Cause if you're going to waste my time, like oh, I could have been home cooking my kids dinner. Yeah. <laughs> you're okay <laughs> by the way we're on zoom because i'm under the, under the weather <laughs> yeah so um, uh make sure you guys subscribe to us on twitch so we can get her to urgent care i'm just kidding <laughs> stop 
<laughs> I'm all right. I'm not dying. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> Subscribe now to Twitch um, to be able to send Alex flowers. Uh, she is dying. So, uh, but I was going to make. Friend. I was going to make a joke about how I thought I was marrying a sugar daddy because I got with my husband when he was in school to become an engineer. Oh. And now he's a freelance graphic designer. He which tricked you. Opposite of he sugar tricked daddy. you. He tricked you. That's not cool. Um, so I don't think totally I've, flipped I've, on that one. Right. I, I don't think I've told you the story. Uh, and if I have, you, uh, I'm sure no one else has heard it that's listening. Um, my husband and I's very first date I, uh, I was 18 and I thought I was hot as shit because I was, because I was 18. Um, and I'm really hotter now than I was at 18. Just so. <laughs> I'm just getting better as time goes on. Oh, like a fine wine. Yeah. Um, and me, not so much. I'm starting to get a little squidgy around the edges. Uh, <laughs> but I, um, on our first date, I looked at him I'm like, you seem like a real nice guy, but my dream is to have fake boobs and an SUV and my hardest decision to be where we go on vacation. So if you're not down for that, right. And he looked at me and he goes, yeah, totally. We could do that. So and I, I totally <laughs> was taken aback because so many guys, like I, I mostly said it as a joke Yeah. to like on several first dates because I thought it was like it was like your mind yeah right like I thought it was the most ridiculous thing that could be said and my my husband was like yeah if that's what you want like sure sure <laughs> let's make it happen um <laughs> by the way we were broke as a joke like uh we were splitting like a McDonald's meal that night like yeah. I mean yeah poverty. my husband and I's first valentine's was that sick sick and shake <laughs> <laughs> right exactly yeah. it was great it was great but um now uh 11 years later he's really like come through on that and he likes to remind me like see i told you <laughs> i told you i was gonna make this happen <laughs> right, exactly. shut up you had no uh, idea shut up you had uh, no idea. <laughs> but so uh my husband having that kind of job really yes gives me gave me the ability to go for this full time i was a server for a long time eight nine years i was in the food industry um, and I was doing it for a while while I was working on my certification. And after I'd finished my certifying births, I realized how, um, stressful it is to be doing a stressful job and then have to be checking your phone all the time because someone's about to go into fucking labor. And I told that story last week, I had left, uh, like a Thursday or Friday night work shift. And literally as soon as I got home, got called that, Oh, I'm at the birth center, you know? And, you know, that was a short birth. That was like my shortest. It was like my two hour and a half, two hour birth. It was like insane. Um, but it was like, that was kind of like my wake up call. Like at the yeah. time I was serving, I have my kid, I am working on the doula stuff. I'm on call now. And I was also, um, I create websites for my husband's graphic design business. So I was also learning so cool. how to build websites. So I was just like, I can't hold all of these things and then being a parent and being a partner and hold all these things in my mind to do any of them well. And so, you know, I kind of kick serving to the curb, <laughs> but I can focus on this because there's someone always here. And if, you know, we don't have like, um, a lot of support here, so there wouldn't really be a lot of people that we could rely on when we needed to have someone watch our son. So it's kind of like kismet it was supposed to happen that he was supposed to lose his job and this stuff because right. it's allowed me to like really dive into birth work. So cool. And it it's so it's so neat that you guys have that perspective because I think because I saw your guys' post of it being almost a year of this or a little over yeah. a year. And it's incredible um, how much you guys have done in a year and how much you guys have grown. So yeah. that's so cool. That's just so cool. Um, yeah, and I also would like to say that it also sucks like a whole yeah. lot. Um, yeah. Some people are like, oh my God, you're doing so great. And I'm like, ah, we're like still like doing a little dance every month we can pay rent. So it's like, you know, we're, 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 we're we have an apartment still. <laughs> like that's really it. But it's also like, these are the things that we really want to do and that we think will make us happy and, you know, fulfill us in that way. So. Right. For sure. And there's a lot to be proud of, even if there is that dance, right? Yeah. Because 
you were still able to pay rent you were still <laughs> able to cover your costs like yeah fuck yeah that's amazing um with myself and balance the major one is is my kids um yeah. i have three kids uh they're all under they're five and under so five four and two so that becomes extremely difficult um it was about four months into birth work that I ended up needing someone to come in and help me, which I was mm-hmm. a stay-at-home parent before, and that was a really tough call to make. Yeah. To like have to call an like a nanny agency because I had no one to even be like, "Can you watch the kid?" Like no one in my life could do it, so yeah. I had to hire out. And it's really rough being quoted that. <laughs> it's really rough. Uh, essentially, <laughs> like, like this is how much money I have to make. <laughs> oh, not only is that how much money I have to make, but I have to show like show up in that kind of intensity, right? And it was only 10 hours a week I was getting help. Like that is nothing, nothing. when you're trying to build a build a business. Nothing. Yeah. Um and it was three hundred dollars a week. Nine hours because yeah. my kids in school for 12, but we spend an hour every day driving him to and from school. Oh my god. <laughs> but we get nine hours. It's good. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But it, it's, um, you know, uh, you and I actually met at this place. I ended up utilizing a lot, this place called Modern Aloe, which like give them a major shout out. Like <laughs> they're a big reason why my business is off the ground in the way that it is. Uh, because I was yeah. able to drop my kids in the play area and be like, <laughs> just stay there like for, for a minute <laughs> while I do some stuff for one but, second i need to not right. think about my children <laughs> yeah and then also not sleeping has like yeah. brought around that but like i've had to shift the idea of what is balancing my life versus what am i willing to dedicate time to and also mm-hmm. lose to be yeah. able to so it's not it's not as like cute as like when you see the libra like just holding both and being, balance. Like, oh, look, Right. It's more like, no, I feel more like that scene from this is like a major deep cup. Sorry, guys. Like that scene from Roseanne where she's like figuring out how to pay bills and she's literally just like throwing away certain bills and being like, whoops, guess we never sent that check. And like, that's how balancing doula work for me is like, where I'm like, whoops, I guess like we forgot about karate tonight. So I can like take this consult call and like, this is not happening anymore because I could do this. And like, no worries. The kids get McDonald's for the third time this week because I'm (laughs) zonked. Like the toys. And, and, and and that's like, it's like, is it where do we need balance? Like, can you find balance? I don't feel like we could find balance when I was doing stuff before you know, yeah. serving is a hard job. I would, you know, work a crazy weekend and then come home and need two days of sleep anyway <laughs> to recover, Yeah, you know, and I wasn't the one drinking. I was only working. So it's kind of like, can you find it? Should you find it? Like, at what point do you, like you said, do you like kind of let go of some things, you know, like go of being like that perfect parent, like go of being that perfect partner, you know? Yeah. I think, um, a lot of this has been letting go, which is so funny because that's my number one advice to clients. And I've had to get really comfortable with the idea and how crappy it is to be told, like, you just have to let go. And it's like, oh, fuck you. Like, <laughs> you got to do it yourself. Tell yourself to let it go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Just like Elsa, I have to let it go. And I have, yeah. in particular, I had to let go of this idea that, um, that I didn't have to educate the people around me of what I'm doing and why it's important. That's, that's been and the biggest thing. What do you mean by that? Um, so when I first started, uh, the, the number one thing I heard was like how weird my brand was and like, <laughs> it makes me roll my eyes so hard because <laughs> literally you become a local celebrity <laughs> and everybody knows Emmy's in the Facebook groups, huzzah! And it's like the cutest thing ever. And I just want to fight anybody who's like, this is a terrible brand. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I got told it was a terrible brand because it was too masculine. I got told it was a terrible brand because, uh, you know, like the mainly masculinity, femininity wasn't enough. And that 
birth work isn't going to pay me enough to be able to sustain this. And so there's been a bit of a chip on my shoulder of like, I'm going to make this work. I'm going to make this work just to like have my moment. Just to say, screw Uh, you guys. (laughs) But because of that, like drive, more balance has been thrown out the window. Like more, more willingness to give up sleep more willingness to like give up time or money or making steps faster just so I can like make my footprint even bigger um which is and I I would say it seems like you've done a really good job of that like oh thank you I think that it seems like you've been doing this a lot longer than you have right you know and maybe that's why people are so like what's the secret Emmy, tell me the secret. (laughs) The secret is that uh, you give up the idea of sleep and you, when you're, when you're in this work, I've told so many birthers, like, this is the moment to find that fire in your belly. And I Mm -hmm. swear that's all entrepreneurial work. Oh my God. Yes. Because there's so much unpaid, unseen work in all yeah. entrepreneurship, but in doula work too. Yeah, There's so sure. much unpaid work before you get your client, your first client. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so I think that's, that's a huge part of this is like every entrepreneur, whether it's birth work or uh, graphic design or whatever it may be, you know, you're not going to get the pay immediately. And you know, you're kind of stepping out into something that could be scary or, where you might lose money or sleep or whatever it may be. And you're yeah. willing to throw that balance out the window, like put in blood, sweat, and tears quite literally at times just to make it work because it's the thing you love. Um, so the question I have to you is, is there a thing that you've been able to keep on your priority list or in your balance, the best of all the things you juggle? Um, I think that parenting has been that one thing. Um, the reason why I did the job I did before was that I could be with my kid. Like that's all I wanted. I didn't care if I had to work like in bars for the rest of my life, if I could be with my kid. And this has, that's kind of been this balance for me is that my kid gets to see me every day. And, you know, I have, I had military parents, I had a military mom, you know, she went back to work six weeks after having me, you know, she was deployed for a year when I was like a year and a half. And that put an impact on me that like, I, if I have my kid, I want to spend time with him. Um, and you know, that has been like the biggest thing is I can still do what I want with my kid and find time to do like the trainings or the education or the, you know, the other work in off times, you know? And then yeah. when I do get called out, you know, then I don't feel bad for being gone, <laughs> you know, and I yeah. don't think that people should feel bad, but that was just something that was important to me when I had my kid. And I just wanted to make sure that I had that ability. And that's something I feel that I've still held on to, you know, and I think that that will still kind of come back and forth, you know, as things get busier or less busy. Um yeah. Cause I even had, I had said something about like, you know, postpartum work or childbirth education classes. And I was kind of like, do I want to be out of the house more? Like I thought about that a little bit. Um, and it's just like, it's interesting how like the on-call, you know, leave at a moment's notice for a day or two, I'm okay with, but like the thought of like a five hour postpartum shift, I'm like, ah. Maybe not. Because <laughs> if you, I think with on call life, you're you're rolling a dice. Because, yeah. like you said, it could be just two hours. It could it be. Could. Just I two I would hours. bet so much money that um I never have a that short of a birth ever again. <laughs> just because it was like my second birth, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I've attended three like that. Yeah. Um, one was a couple, couple weeks ago. Uh, it was last week. Uh, it was a car baby. Very exciting, but I was there for four hours and that was with (laughs) me taking postpartum pictures. Yeah. Cause that's, that's what was required, but it feels more like there could be a chance. There could be a chance I'm, I'm home in time. Um, 
versus like a postpartum shift or childbirth education course or whatever kind of education that you're doing. Uh, for a while, I did postpartum uh, belly binding yeah. um, where it's set scheduled and I know I'm going to be gone. So I know there's no chance of me getting home early or like yeah. quickly. I know yeah. I'm going to be gone during that time. So, And that was always my dislike of like a nine to five type job was I was like, people do this every day. They stay <laughs> for the same amount of time every single day. Right. I would rather chance that I'm in this restaurant for 18 hours today than be right. told that I have to be here from nine to five every day. <laughs> That's so funny. I think that yeah, uh, doesn't make any fucking sense when no. you think about it, but you know, that's kind of how my brain works. And it's funny because I'm sure there's plenty of postpartum doulas out there who are like, you guys are crazy. It is oh, yeah. great that I go in for this time and then I'm there to be for my kids and like, I can schedule it and my life is good. And I wonder if it speaks to maybe your nice situation of we don't have a ton of family to depend on or yeah. don't have those systems set like immediately set up for us. So we would much rather roll the dice and hope instead of have to build a village and have to yeah. like scrape and grind in order to do it. Yeah. Like I, I, I know it is for me. Like I don't want to go through that that turmoil of like vetting people in order to hopefully see something that looks like balance. It's hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to bring people in your life that way too. Yeah, exactly. Because you're intentionally bringing them in for service. Yeah. Oh yeah. shit. I just realized what Stressing our clients out. go through. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you set that one up on purpose. <laughs> I swear I did not. That seems like very on purpose. That you just said that. <laughs> I just realized what our clients get through of yeah. like, that's why they're so nervous with us. Got it. Yeah. See, that's what empathy does though. Like I would have reached that if I had just said it out loud and just kept rolling by. So yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, you're like spot on. They're right. betting us to bring in paid support. Yeah. Right. Mic oh. drop. Come on. Right. <laughs> there we go. We did it. Fabulous. The week. <laughs> the, like done. Who I can go home now. Oh. We get an episode. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. Um. So, do you feel like you've been able to retain anything as far as finding balance, or have you thrown that out the window and said, like, screw it, I'm just gonna go all in. Um, so I have an all or nothing personality as it is. Yeah. My dad used to say that I was essentially a stubborn donkey, you know, <laughs> I could get you halfway up the mountain. And then after that point, I'm not moving anymore. Yeah. So, um, I've, I've thrown, 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 um, I've thrown, I've been throwing, I've been throwing balance out the window. Um, and I've redefined it as what is a priority of the week instead of me trying to keep things as like 20, 20, 20, 20%, like across the board as possible. Yeah. One human. And I think it was more gentle on my soul to be like this week, the house is going to be a mess. And this week, the dishes aren't going to get done and my laundry is not going to get done. And also, um, I'm going to attend three births. Yeah. So this is the thing I'm choosing to give up in order to do this thing. But ultimately next week, I will focus on all those things that I missed out on the week prior. And I feel overall, if I pull way back, there is balance. Yeah. However, if I judge myself in the moment, there is no balance. You don't it is it. chaos. Yeah. It is like, if someone to walk into my house right now, they would be like, whoa, everything okay with you guys? <laughs> so first of all, anybody with three children is has a life full of chaos. Like it's not <laughs> yeah. just because you have another job. <laughs> right, for sure. You know. Um, and I remember uh, the, the comment I used to get and still get when people see me with my kids, especially when they were very tiny. It's like, oh my God, you have your hands full. And I'm like, life's Arf, not fun. Unless stop it's saying that to people. 
right? right? Are you going to pick up one of my kids and help me? No, <laughs> then shut the fuck up. Um, so the nice way of telling them to shut the fuck up was me saying back, like, yeah, life is more fun when it's chaos. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think I've just embraced that into this next stage of me starting this business and all of that. Like, it's more fun if we have chaos going on. It's <laughs> going to be okay because um, it's not going to always be like this. And that's something yeah. I try and remind myself. The, the way my business is now is not how it was six months ago. And it's not how it was a year ago. And it's not yeah. how it was a year and a half ago when I first started. Like, yeah. it's just not. Um and the way it's, like developed it's always going to be changing. Yeah, exactly. And right now I'm doing, I feel a pretty good job of balance and making sure that I'm pulling back in certain areas. So one of the things I have done is pulled back on commenting on every post on Facebook groups and all of that, yeah. because I don't have the brain space for it anymore. Yeah. One day I'll hire a person to impersonate me and be in those groups, but uh, one day now, I'll be good at social media too. So. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll hire whoever you find. To do sweet, that. sweet, perfect. Um, by the way, if you if you want to be my social media manager, go ahead and reach out. Uh, yes. I, I'm a send I'm all applications to uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ring of Fire Podcast. At right, Gmail. exactly. Beautiful, right? Um, yeah. Because I low key do this one with you, so yeah, it would be really nice if we could do that. But yeah, oh, I forgot uh, that this wasn't your email. Sorry. <laughs> You're trying to get one for the podcast. Like, hey, come on, social that, media that, managers. Please, somebody send us an email. Uh, I just I'll, really uh, want to open it and see an email. <laughs> <laughs> Say hi to me, please. <laughs> um, we will pay you in clout. Um, <laughs> you know, our yeah. Instagram page is coming up. Just saying. It is. Doing good. It is. But, it, you know. <laughs> look man we got a whole six likes on our last post i'm i'm impressed by us we're yeah. very little <laughs> we, we're we're doing a lot uh we're doing good okay but sorry back to your story <laughs> what you were saying <laughs> what i was saying is i've allowed certain like minute tests or even ideas that, of things that i wanted to get done immediately and spread out the timeline some and yeah. made made sure that i understand that i am one human and as much as I love um, Mark uh, Rubin, I think that's his name. Shoot, I'm going to sound so dumb if I quote him incorrectly. But Where he talks it? about Mark Rubin. Ooh, from that, what? That doesn't feel right. Are you saying Mark Cuban? Are you talking <laughs> about the guy from Shark Tank? Okay. <laughs> that's what I thought. Oh my God, guys, my brain. You ready to hear this connection? <laughs> A Cuban and a Reuben are both sandwiches. <laughs> Mark Cuban says that unless you're willing to um, give 110% to your business, you should not be doing it. Yeah. Um, and so that's the thing that I keep in mind is as much as I'm willing to give 110 to this business and the stream and all of that, that does not mean that 110% comes every single day. And that it is a much bigger picture. So it all rounds about to the same. I'm attaining balance by pulling out and realizing how much that I'm doing instead of trying to get it all done in one day or even one week or one birth. Like I'm not going to be able to build a business off of like getting the perfect birth every time or the perfect week every time. Yeah. So that's such a high expectation. And that kind of goes back to what you're talking about you know, about letting go and of certain things. And, you know, I consistently have to let go of like the expectations that like I have on myself to be like a mom or a partner, or, you know, like I feel those creeping in at times. Cause I always make the joke about, um, how I tell people that I don't cook and people are like, what? Not like, what? Or I'll, they'll be like, oh, what do you pack your kid for lunch? I'm like, nothing. I don't pack lunches. No. My husband does that because he's yeah. awesome, right? But right. so it, it's just like people are shocked that that's not something that I do. And it's mostly because I'm not good at it. My husband doesn't want like dry chicken. Like his, his family actually taught him to cook and he's great, a great cook. 
but it's just a funny thing because those expectations that are set on people who are on pe- on women, you know, yes, is uh, they're high, you know, they're super high. Um, it's hard to not put that on yourself. Like, oh, well, uh, maybe I should learn to cook. I don't have time to fucking learn to cook. Like, but I, you know, I, I, I learned how to build a website. I learned how to be a doula and a childbirth education educator. Yeah. Right. And yeah. I, I'm, you know, it's like, there's lots of other things that can bring value. And like that, letting go of that is a, was a big thing for me. And I found this TikTok account called Domestic Bliss- Blisters. Oh, PC I adore Davis her. Is amazing. And it, they just talk about like removing shame from care tasks because I there's so much shame wrapped up in that. them. And I adore love it. it. Yes. And I adore it that was a big like wake up call for me. Like, oh, I'm not a bad person if I don't clean the house. Right. If I don't, you know, like if I don't like read my kid and the 20th story of the day, like, uh, you know, if there's dishes in the sink, if there's, you know, and even as someone who's, who really tries to not like get stuck on those things, I, it's hard not to, you Um. know, her saying it's morally neutral yes to be fat it is morally neutral to have dishes in your sink it is morally neutral to not eat all of the fruit in your fridge before it goes bad like (laughs) all of those things like she said it and it like hit that place in my in my soul where I was like (laughs) like just like mom thank you so much exactly exactly um yeah, that, that is such a thing and how much shame is wrapped up in it. And I think um, for me in particular, like uh, I have ADHD. So doing any of this is a lot at times. Yeah. Um, so I think that's where I ended up reaching that like letting go phase because I was like, well, it's not possible. So why do you think you're going to do it now? Right. Like yeah. you added a, an extra 10 things onto your plate. So <laughs> just be cool with it. Like just be cool. Was it happening before? Why would it happen all of a sudden? Yeah. Nope. So <laughs> just, just be happy with it. And, uh, one of the things my husband and I talked about pre to any of this, it was when I was pregnant with our second. Um, our first two are 17 months apart. So my first was nine months when I was like, start like that beginning stage of pregnancy that sucks where you're like, you're tired all the time. Your boobs hurt the whole nine yards. Yeah. Well, I think with pregnancy <laughs> is ADHD symptoms get worse. Oh, that's interesting. And so I ended up having the conversation with him of like, look, I don't have the ability to keep this house at the standards you want. I think it's time for us to pull in that extra help and I have to let go of this idea that I could keep up with a kid and then an impending another kid without someone coming through and like making sure that our floors aren't sticky, right? Like I need that help. So, um, I think it's interesting that we ended up on the topic through balance about letting go of shame yeah. Um, and letting go of this idea of perfection. And honestly, it's like my greatest goal is for anyone who ever encounters me as like, oh my God, you do so much for them to truly hear me when I say it just looks that way. Yeah. I'm on a struggle bus too. <laughs> like, I really want people to hear that though. So that way they know, like the this is all facade, man. Like, I'm glad that you see how much work I'm putting into this, but this is all like facade. I I haven't slept in like a week and a half. Like, don't, (laughs) don't, don't congratulate me on this. This is, this is still not healthy. (laughs) We'll get there one day. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Uh, You guys can help us get there by subscribing to us. (laughs) so we can start to monetize this yes please we just need 50 just need 50 guys we're, we're a so good close. starting point i think right, we have right. 50 followers on instagram well there you go <laughs> come on guys it's free um yeah so that's what i can i can say to this i do think so much of it is wrapped up in that and i do think it shouldn't be missed 
that typically in birth work, not only are individuals who are drawn to birth work are AFAB and identify as uh, she, she, her, but also we're usually <laughs> interacting with people who are AFAB and identify as she, her. So mm -hmm. this is going to be a topic all the way across and we're going to be talking about it even if we're not talking about it right like yeah, it all ties into each other right because the expectations that, that are placed on us yeah talking to a client where she's like I've been throwing up a lot and I can't keep up with the house and it's like then go to bed no I I yeah. can't do that don't you have a way to help me like keep up nope because I'm not a medical professional first yeah. of all and second of all I'm here to tell you it's okay if you go to bed and yeah. like eat the animal fries only for the next three months because but how do you down. talk over the patriarchy and like a oh. lifelong experience of <laughs> right? being told the opposite you know yeah or yeah. even the experience of going to the OB and being like um what are you eating right. are you are you sure there's are you making sure to eat enough protein with every no no I could eat buttered noodles <laughs> or crackers my first time. Right. No, I don't care how much protein is in buttered noodles. Probably exactly. none. Yeah. <laughs> this is the only thing I can eat. So please let me have this. Yeah. And I think it's um, because I, I, I could quickly see you and I devolving into this topic, but like, Sorry. <laughs> it, no, 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 for sure not. Like, don't be sorry, because I think it, it it's still a part of this, like um, talking about what things we do to take care of ourselves is a part of that balancing act. And what is seen as morally neutral or good for you is so important to talk about, because like I mentioned it three times, I'm not kidding. I don't sleep much. That's yeah. in in quotation marks, not OK. I should be sleeping more. I should be taking better care of myself because I could be a better doula if I slept more. But yeah. what does giving up sleep do for me? It allows me to build this a lot faster. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe jump started a little bit more so it that is. you can do less later or take care of yourself later in that sense. Right. But even yeah. in that sense of you talking about the buttered noodles, right? Why am I doing this? Because I need to eat. Yeah. And no, it's not the best choices out of all of these, but it's the one that I'm choosing to make because it's going to fulfill me. Yeah. So yeah, the uh, benefit outweighs that. Right. So yeah. I'm, I'm choosing to outweigh the balance, right? I'm choosing yeah. <laughs> to get rid of balance in order to fulfill my heart. I love how our episode on finding balance is to say fuck it you don't find it and you're not gonna find it and it's really fucking hard <laughs> and everybody uh, comes into birth work because they have they probably have children a lot of people have children that come into birth work not everybody but they have maybe these traumatic experiences and that typically lends into like people getting interested in the work which means that you have a child to take care of <laughs> while yeah. you're doing this work Right. Um, and it's just a lot, you know, and I love that it was like, yeah, you're not going to find it. Sorry. I'm sorry if, if you thought if we you were going to give you answers. If you do, please write Alex an email at gmail.com. I will respond. I will read it at the next we episode. Will read it on the next episode. Please we will talk read it. to me. <laughs> right. Because, um, Real talk, I don't think it exists. I don't yeah. think it exists. I think it's a fantasy. I think it's a fantasy that there's any sort of balance in any aspect of life. It wouldn't matter if you did birth work or if you were a plumber. It does yeah. pick a thing. There's no balance. Stay-at-home stay what... parents struggle with that balance. You know, right. anybody, anybody. Yeah, just because you do a more flexible type of work or an on-call work doesn't make it it makes it harder to balance all of that stuff because then you have to even think about the balance in your brain of balancing up being on call or you're doing like I'm brushing my teeth and I get a text message with a question. Mm -hmm. Oh, guess I gotta go look something up. <laughs> like, 
you know, like that's what being available, you know, as soon as you're hired or at 36 weeks or whatever, all the time means, you know, constantly having to say, okay, I'm going to shift my brain from parenting or cleaning or whatever to placentas or (laughs) baby's position or this can she asshole. take can we find another one yeah during like, pregnancy yeah i should i should google that is it is it normal that breast milk is chunky i can't remember like <laughs> you know like i i've had those moments before so it's like it's, wait, wait wait it's blue give me a sec, give me a sec. <laughs> let me make sure <laughs> which they could have googled too i'm just saying the amount of oh. times I've Googled something just to like double check my knowledge is really funny because they could have Googled the same thing. I'm glad I'm there for them, but it is funny to me every time. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. And it's like how long I'll- breast milk can be left out is a Googleable. Googleable? Is that a Googleable. word? Googleable. It is Doing a Googleable. <laughs> it was a Googleable, like, you know, thing. Uh- I like it. It's now a part of our vernacular here. I'm going to put it into our lexicon. Everything Love is it. Googleable. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think that's a huge part of it. Um, understanding that you're taking on a life of servitude because like we can go back to the original definition of doula, which is a servant to woman. Yeah. Um, and I, I won't even go further with that, which is slave to woman. Right. Yeah. So that's a part of it. And I think if you go into the, into doula work and you think for a moment that you're going to find balance, then you didn't read the definition well enough. You read, you read the quiet part and only the quiet part, right? (laughs) Like that's all you got from it. Because when I read it, I read slave. I read like, I'm going to be in this. Yeah. And I didn't, I don't read it that extreme. I do. I do. <laughs> but I do, I do view it as like you're in service to other people. Yeah. You know, yeah. and um, when you feel like that's your like calling or that's what you're supposed to do, you know, there, there's always going to be sacrifices to be made. There's always yeah. going to be things to be thrown out the window if you're choosing to do something that cares for people, you know, because it, you know, that's what midwives and doctors and obstetricians sign up for the same thing, you know, exactly on call to be in service to people, you know, I can't tell you how many times I've been in the room, especially with there's certain teams in the Valley where I've heard the midwife be like, yeah, I've been up for 24 hours. Like people <laughs> just keep having babies right now. And yeah. I know they're falling asleep in some broom closet for like 30 <laughs> minutes yes. and then it's time to catch a baby again. Right. Like, yeah. so they're going through it too. And you can see that dedication. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's either, it doesn't matter what setting they're in. They all have that dedication and that yeah. want and that need. So. Yeah, I, I was going to say something, but I got distracted. I was looking at you. <laughs> I'm so pretty. Um, distracted. Sorry. <laughs> I got no, very distracted. Um, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> It's gone. Dead, dead it's air. Gone. Dead air. Sorry, guys. It left. It left the building. <laughs> With um, all this, um, yeah. <laughs> I'm okay. gonna ask the final question. Let's um, hear it. So that way, we can um, move on through. If there is one element of your life that you will say gets thrown out the window first which one is it it's the one that shouldn't it's caring for myself you know Ooh, yeah yeah yeah. that's that's the the first one to go and it shouldn't be and we've I've got to figure out everybody needs to figure out how to not do that um but it's so easy to do that because then I can say well I'm the only person that's losing out Right. Yeah. So my kids not losing out. My husband's not losing out. My, you know, like all this, uh, my clients aren't losing out. It's just me, you know, but we've talked about that and we know that that's not the case, you know, and I have been at births where I forget to eat or I don't have the opportunity or, you know, things like that. Mm-hmm. And that's always the first thing that goes, you know, and it's hard. Again, I think that that's part of like, 
the like I don't know if that's part of like being raised as a woman like you know to like always sacrifice yourself to always put yourself to the side like the whole like self-care movement came from people who were parents not caring for themselves you know and so that's always the first thing that goes out the window and that's always the thing that has the most the largest you know impact you know and coming into this work has been tough for me because I spent a lot of time balancing my life I was kind of like a like a chaos goblin you know (laughs) like for like my whole life I I was I was just chasing like, you know, adrenaline rush after adrenaline rush or, yeah. you know, dopamine, yeah. whatever. But um, that was something I always did. I always ran until I burnt out. I always worked 30 hours in three days. I always, you know, like, or 40 hours in three days. Uh, sorry. I always made my rent in a weekend. Like, like I always right. like did like stupid stuff. I always stayed up too late or, you know, I got in the airplane still drunk from the night before, like stupid stuff like that. And I, it kind of clicked one day that like, that's why you feel like shit. Like you're, that's why you're on this roller coaster of mania and depression because you are yeah. just chasing chaos. So I yeah. spent a lot of time bringing my life and in, in my mind into balance. And now you throw things in there like, oh, I have to be awake for 24 hours or even every time I'm at a birth and it's overnight and the sun comes up, I'm like, this is, this feels familiar, you know? So it's yeah. kind of like, I'm like, Ooh, this feels, this feels where I'm supposed to be. It's <laughs> funny. I, I, th- I think self-care is a thing for me too, but I completely reject what self-care movement has turned into. Oh yeah. Because often it's related to are you getting facials? Are you getting massages? Are, yeah. are your nails done? Like, I think it's so fascinating that it changed from how your priority should be yourself first, which is growth and making sure that you're fulfilled and your, your heart's not depleted to does your skin look good? Yeah. Like, um, oh, let, it, it became cap, uh, marketable self-care. Right. Oh, because yeah. originally it was like, oh, these people who take care for their children all day are, aren't getting a chance to shower or right. eat or like you said, care about themselves for one minute. Like, <laughs> But now it's like, oh, but we can sell you self-care if it's right. packaged into, you know, the facial, the skincare routine, the whatever. Right. So I, I always encourage people when they're they're talking about self-care, like, and they're like, oh my God, I spend too much time on my phone. That could be a form of self-care, guys. Like zoning out to like watch a YouTube video or like just scroll on Instagram can be a form of self-care. Yeah. Like space cadetting can be a self of like form of self-care because you need that to shut down for a while so that way the rest of the brain can recoup. So I will say self-care is a, a really big thing for me. Um, and it is one of the first that goes out the window. Um, and mine is in that more tangible, uh, way where it's like, shit, it's been three days since I've showered. Yeah. Like, oh, right. I have to interact with people. Oh no. Like, <laughs> and oh, no. I, oh no, that, that whole <laughs> line from, uh, Bo Barham, like, I look like a bag of shit. Like, I'll yeah. leave and be like, oh, whoop. I have to go back inside like my literally guys right now my pants are inside out like because I was like I gotta get on this thing I can't wear pj pants because I'll feel weird so I put on a pair of pants and I look down just now and they're inside I out. mean no one knows if I'm wearing pants right now that that is true but I made a conscious effort to try and make myself feel good and I still fucked it up like <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, uh, self-care is completely the thing for me that goes straight out the window. But at the same point, when uh, a task gets done or I attend that birth, that high is so big that it feels like a form of self-care, Yeah. right? So uh, I think that happened this week are the books that are going to be a part of the education courses that I developed are finished and I have them in my hands and I'm able to be like, oh my God, I did that. Like I- 
I'm technically a, a self-published author at this point. And I'm like, this feels like the same kind of high I would get more than likely if I actually did the structured self-care, right? <laughs> like yeah. if like I did the things and didn't show yeah. up to my dentist and he's like, when was the last time you flossed? And I'm like, oh, flossing, right. That's a thing I should be doing. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> And do you feel like some of that is, this is a little bit off it, but do you feel like some of that is like ADHD or being neurodivergent? Oh, completely, completely. Um, Neurodivergence uh, colors everything in my life. Yeah. And I don't think people realize how many people in their lives are neurodivergent or maybe they are themselves. Um, But so much of what you guys see is neurodivergency in birth wizard in yeah. Emmy. Um, well, I think in no, birth work, yeah, you know, because to there's, do this type of job no has way. to be a something. There's no way you could get a neurotypical to stay up for as many hours as we do to give as much as we do to be oh. cool with the highs that we do and then go home and edit a bunch of photos and hyper-focus yeah. like there's, there's yeah. no way. Or go Um, home and like be a person. (laughs) Right. Um, I've always thought of neurodivergence as, or people who are neurodivergent as um, we were the protectors in the village. We're we're hyper vigilant. We're hyper focused. We're really great at care tasks and taking care of others. We're really great at noticing things. We were created to help take care of the village. So my job is to stand on the outskirts and notice the shaking bush because the neurotypicals wouldn't, I'm here to protect you. Yeah. So, um, she's so cute. Everything leads back to Emmy's brand. She's like, (laughs) everything. Uh, it's, it's so bad. Um, but yeah, so, so much of me is neurodivergency and I was fortunate enough to get my diagnoses very young and I come from a very neurodiverse family. So I came to terms with it at a very young age and it colors everything. And maybe that's also the reason why I'm okay with the sense of no balance in my life Yeah, because there's no way I could balance my life like a neurotypical. There's no way I could set up my life like a neurotypical and make it look good. Be all right with it. Yeah. Nope. I, uh, that would kill me. And yeah. I, I don't mean that um, facetiously, but it, it would kill my soul. Like I wouldn't be the same person. You would not yeah. see the color in my life. Yeah. Maybe that's why neurotypical people can be so boring. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to say. Okay. <laughs> no, listen, I like this. I like that this podcast is turning into let's bully neurotypical. <laughs> let's burn let's bully neurotypicals please right right and tease uh you're empty uh and your face looks funny uh, <laughs> no uh i i do think that's a huge part of it and yeah i do i do believe um there i have yet to meet a birth worker who is neurotypical yeah. I've yet to meet one um and a lot of them just don't realize they aren't neurotypical yet Yeah. And I, and I just, I think it does really attract a certain type of person. And I feel that like literally every doula I've met so far has been like a certain type of person and a certain type of like, of course, everybody has their different styles and things like that, but I haven't met someone that like, wasn't meant to do it. Like you can feel like they radiate that, you know? And I feel that that is the big part that makes people say like, fuck it. I'm not going to worry about balance. I'm going to go all into this, you know? And like, you know, when we went out to dinner the other night, we ended up talking about birth the entire time, which is what is so funny that like, like, is that balance, you know, like, (laughs) you know, or is that like, would that be, would people be talking shit if like you were like, a car salesman and you talked about cars all night or like you know what I'm saying like it's something that very like it kind of takes over your life a little bit you know yeah I mean I guess I I'm so pre to birth work I my husband like I said does software engineering and all of those guys pretty much because it's mostly men are uh 
on the autistic spectrum somewhere. They land yeah. somewhere on there. So I'm very used to info dumping. I'm very used to like hyper-focusing and being like really fascinated by a topic. So I absolutely yeah. love being a part of this community where it's like dope. We're eating ice cream and we're talking about placentas right now. This is my place. See, I like, these it. are my people. I love it. I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> Obviously right now is the time to talk about the, um, crazy force at birth we witnessed while I'm eating my steak. Of yeah. course, of course, that's no, what we're no doing problem. at this dinner. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And if it's not about that, it's something to do in that realm. And we're yeah. exploring the topic even deeper and making sure to share that information across. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I love it. You. I was just, it's just an interesting, uh, you know, thought about it. Like, it, again, it really seems like balance is the wrong thing to be chasing because you're probably not going to find it, you know, like that's no. really what it, you know. That's the conclusion. I Guys, think so. We found it. That and that neurotypicals are boring. <laughs> Honestly, uh, I feel like we should there. do a whole episode on just like on just that being neurodiverse in birth work. And like I want to yeah. see if there's like any sort of studies or like any sort yeah. of information. Cause uh it's been a fascinating point for me of trying to figure out ways to help neuro um divergence with birth and how to make it more friendly to them yeah because there's elements that aren't friendly we need to poll our audience <laughs> yeah. yeah i think that's a great idea all 56 yeah. of them and you guys should join twitch so yes. Yes. we have 53 <laughs> instagram followers i think it's and, happening you know, it's happening come it's over happening, here guys <laughs> right but okay thank you for joining us I am Alex Barr. And I'm Emmy, the birth wizard. We are Ring of Fire podcast on all platforms, including Instagram. If you want to follow us, follow us on Twitch. If you're listening to this on YouTube or anywhere else. And I think that's it. Yeah. See you next week. What are we talking about next week? I think it's about certifying births if they're yes. necessary or not. Should certifying I... births be necessary or not? So send us an email. We would love to know what you have to say. Yes, please. Bye.